only a handful of American movie stars speak up for Palestine, and those few are made to pay the price for their public support. Why is it so important for the movie industry to silence those voices? Israeli historian Giora Goodman says, And I was surprised again and again to find just how much effort and care and thought uh, had been put in by uh, Israeli government officials, by Israeli IDF officers into bringing over to Israel's cause uh, what is uh, the global uh, entertainment capital. So, Hollywood matters to Israel because it is influential. But why does Israel matter to Hollywood? It is difficult to ask that question, let alone answer it, without attracting charges of anti-Semitism. Mr. Cartman, you are on dangerous frickin' ground here, buddy. I'm sorry, why is it so offensive to say who runs Hollywood? People like Hollywood. Hollywood's cute. The Jews should be honored to be in charge of it. It is true that widespread anti-Semitism conspiracy theories about Jews running Hollywood exist and fuel a dangerous mentality, but making the whole topic taboo to talk about is not the answer. Israeli historian Giora Goodman and British historian Tony Shaw co-authored a book called Israel and Hollywood. The authors told the University of Southern California that Hollywood bosses such as Barney Balaban in the 1950s Arthur Krim in the 1960s and Haim Saban in the 21st century have also sought to use their political influence in the White House and with U.S. decision makers to promote the goals of Israeli diplomacy in war and peace. It is undeniable that Hollywood has a very real influence on U.S.-Israel relations and that influence is linked to Hollywood's Jewish roots. For people so small in number, our impact is staggering. Dustin Hoffman for Rain Dozens of Emmy and Golden Globe winners and almost 40% of Oscar-winning directors are members of the tribe. That is Israel's very own Genesis Prize Foundation. It is a widely known fact that... Modern America first saw light on a Hollywood screen. It was largely the product of six movie studios established in the 1920s and run for over 30 years by a group of Jewish immigrants. They had strikingly similar backgrounds. These five or six Jewish immigrants ended up building all the first major studios that created Hollywood from scratch. All of these men who founded Hollywood were born within a 500 mile radius of one another. And all of them wound up roughly within 15 miles of one another in Los Angeles. The influence Hollywood and its movie stars had in the US would soon be utilized to garner support from American Jews and Gentiles alike for the Zionist project. This kind of movie going was religious because it had to do with worship. It had to do with the screen being larger than you were uh, and you being in awe of what you were looking at. The Jewish production studio heads organized fundraisers with their movie stars and wealthy influential connections and collected tens of millions of dollars for a massive emigration of Jews to Palestine under the British mandate. One of these men, Barney Balaban, head of Paramount Pictures from the 1930s to the 60s, would even help found the most influential Israeli lobby group in America, APEC. But money and political connections were only secondary to their main effort, which was to tell a romanticized story about the creation of Israel. The first feature-length Zionist film made by Hollywood was secretly funded in large part by the controversial Jewish National Fund. JNF, established in 1901, is the financial arm of the Zionist organization. The film did not do well, but the partnership between Israel and Hollywood was not going to fizzle out that easily. They made film after film until they hit the jackpot with the 1960 movie Exodus. Exodus was based on a racist novel by the same name that the Israeli foreign minister Golda Meir at the time said was more influential than 60 years of Zionist and Israeli propaganda. As a film, Exodus went even further than the book in totally erasing the Nakba, the massive ethnic cleansing and displacement of 750,000 Palestinians in 1948. The Jewish hero of the story, Ben Canaan, begs the Arabs to stay in their homes and become an equal part of the state, but they refuse and leave. After the 1960s, Hollywood moved on from completely ignoring the Palestinians to portraying Arabs and Muslims as irrational, evil terrorists who often had no real motivation beyond They hate our freedoms. Arab enemies were dehumanized while telling the story of Jewish victims of the Holocaust helped melt American hearts. 
1978 TV miniseries called Holocaust, featuring Meryl Streep, was watched by nearly 100 million Americans. It told the story of the Holocaust in four episodes over nine and a half hours and ended with Jewish orphans being smuggled into Palestine illegally. It was not until Israel's invasion of Lebanon in 1982, when Israel killed thousands of civilians, that tides started turning and public opinion that Israel was the underdog started to change in the US. In the 1980s, with the first Lebanon war, and then the first intifada, and the, the moral doubts about uh, Israel's use of force, and the direction of its uh, government, and that is uh, the younger the younger liberals, uh, they are more ambivalent about Israel, while the old uh, generation, uh, such as uh, Kirk Douglas, uh, would support Israel. According to a 2004 report by the American Jewish Committee, a younger Netanyahu met with Hollywood executives in 2001 and challenged them to do something about Israel's image problem. Netanyahu has long enjoyed close relations with his buddies in Hollywood. One of the most shocking Hollywood stories is that of his pal, producer Arnon Milken. Milken is behind massively successful commercial films like Pretty Woman, Fight Club, 12 Years a Slave, Little Woman, and many more. During his time as an Israeli spy and arms dealer, one of Milken's jobs was to acquire uranium from South Africa for Israel's nuclear program, and in exchange, he ran this massive pro-apartheid campaign in Hollywood on behalf of South Africa. In the end, one of the most important things Hollywood did to rally American support for Israel was to tell the story of the Holocaust and connect it to the establishment of Israel, while completely disregarding and erasing the suffering and ethnic cleansing of Palestinians. Countless films, TV shows, and fictional characters work to make often white-looking Israeli heroes relatable to white people in the US and to paint Muslims and Arabs as the violent and savage enemy of the unified, peace-loving Judeo-Christian people. What do you think? Do Hollywood films and celebrities still hold influence over what people think of Israel and Palestine?